So with this big budget film, Mulan, premiering as obviously COVID-19 is in the backdrop, what's the mood like on red carpets? Uh, well, you know, red carpets, uh, we don't really cover specifically, but I can say uh, Milan was actually just uh, confirmed by Disney to be uh, moving its delay or moving its release date. I haven't announced a new date yet, but Disney has has moved to uh, move that film as well as two others they have on the slate in the coming weeks. And obviously you have other films like James Bond's No Time to Die having to postpone their premieres, and you have some TV programs halting production. What's Hollywood's response to all this disruption? It's very challenging, you know, as it is for everybody, for every industry right now. And there's there, there's not a clear, definable answer at the moment. I think priority number one for everyone involved is uh, let's see the world through this health crisis right now and do what's what's smart without panicking. And right now, you know, domestically, movie theaters are staying open. Uh, it's a day-to-day -day situation. We're not sure if or when that will change. Overseas, we've seen different impacts, uh, Italy and China, the most notable right now at the box office, as well as South Korea, but because of closures. And we've seen other countries like France uh, employ kind of a, uh, basically reduce capacity by 50%, employ the social distancing uh, idea that we're starting to hear a lot more of in the States. And New York, I think, is actually uh, employing that as well now in movie theaters and in any venue that's 250 or less capacity. So, uh, and it might... It, it's very it's very difficult to, to gauge, though, and to forecast because we are in a day-to-day -day situation. We certainly are. And we did see that recently Tom Hanks and his wife, Rita Wilson, very high-profile Hollywood couple, made headlines when they tested positive for COVID-19 while filming in Australia. But what about all the people who support this industry, who work behind the scenes? Do we have any sort of statements from the industry's unions or executives about this? You know, it's it's almost hard to keep track. I think there are a lot of statements going out. Uh, the National Association of Theater Owners did just cancel CinemaCon uh, last night, which is the annual gathering of, of theater owners and people covering the industry from all over the world every year. And it's it's really, you know, it's in response to all the concerns, all the health concerns, the fact that a lot of people won't be able to travel from Europe now, which there is usually a big contingency for that convention. Uh, and that's just one example of many. We've seen South by Southwest cancel. And, you know, it, it's, it's, it's kind of at the point where, you know, it, an abundance of caution and better to be safe than sorry. Right. And we certainly see a lot of preparation obviously goes into these things like these premieres and, and really getting these, these um, movies out there. What is the process like to try and make changes to production schedules and movie releases? It's challenging. And, you know, production schedules, uh, most, we haven't seen too many. We've seen a few high profile ones uh, be hit by this Mission Impossible 7, this Disney Plus series, a Marvel series for Disney Plus that temporarily halted. Uh, but in terms of release slates, obviously we've seen a lot more big announcements in the last few days and weeks. We had James Bond be delayed. Fast 9 was delayed this morning. Uh, Mulan now. And it's, it's kind of like a domino effect. But in the end, these are studios are A, focusing on the health crisis, you know, protecting audiences, making sure that uh, this is some, that's pro top priority. And then at the end of the day, bottom line perspective, it, it's better to spend a little bit more later down the road, put these films out when they'll be able to not have to deal with this crisis at the, at the heart of their release. And that's, that's going to be something that we'll kind of see play out I think once, we, once we hit this phase of recovery. Uh, we'll learn more about any movies that haven't been redated yet. Uh, we'll find out when those are going to come out. And what we honestly think is it could actually spur uh, interest in, in movie attendance because the need for escapism is, is, is just going to be even higher, I think, at this point. Now, though, in terms of the, the downturn that, you, that we're seeing, obviously, from people who perhaps are concerned about being in enclosed movie theaters, but how much of that can be blamed on the coronavirus, say, versus some of the changes that we consume entertainment with things like streaming services? Uh, you know, it's an interesting question, and it, I think domestically we've, we've interestingly seen not a lot of impact yet uh, from the coronavirus. Streaming and theatrical, we tend to view as, as two very different products, almost akin to the rise of, of VHS several decades ago. Or, or did people stop going to concerts when, when radio came about in the previous century? So it's you know very loose co comparisons, but that's that's tend to how we see the metrics. If anything, we tend to find in a lot of surveys that people that generally stream more actually tend to be some of the more frequent moviegoers. And, you know, with regard to coronavirus, I think at this point, 
we're just we're just kind of taking it day by day. There hasn't been a domestic impact yet. That's that that's as there haven't been any closures, there haven't been any major announcements. Obviously, at this point, without some of the big titles on the slate, it's hard to expect uh, the attendance would be as high as it would have been with Fast Nine and Mulan and A Quiet Place coming out. But that doesn't mean necessarily that people will stop going to movies. Indeed, certainly hope not. Thank you so much. Sean Robbins there, Chief Analyst at BoxOffice.com.